come on in. Hey, what a glorious day we're having today here in Great Britain. The temperatures have scored, or soared even, and we are in the middle of a heat wave. And I have just got a boat coming past me again. We'll let it go by, shall we? Nah, let's just carry on. I hope you're all well and that you've all had a really good week. Now, this week I've got something special for you. Yeah, I have. This week I went out with one of my subscribers uh, who has become a very good friend to me. His name is Simon Collier and you will get a quick glance of him during the proceedings. Mm. He took me in a car. Now, obviously, when you've got a narrow boat, you can't take those on roads, but I needed to get to a few locations. And Simon was kind enough to take me and to spend the day with me. And we had a really super day, as you will find out. We've been tracing the, uh, the route or the origins of the Shrewsbury and Newport Canal, which is currently undergoing restoration. And right at the end of this uh, video vlog, you'll find links to all of their uh, websites and how you can sign up uh, to become a volunteer and to give them a hand. They've got a massive task ahead of them, but they are making progress and it's really exciting. So I want to share the Shrewsbury and Newport Canal with you. The uh, Shrewsbury and Newport Canals are in fact two very different waterways. The first, the Shrewsbury Canal, which went as far as Telford, was opened in 1797 and it went from the coalfield, which is now the town of Telford. It was initially a uh, tugboat canal, which means it was designed for boats six feet wide, 20 feet long, with a three foot draft and its main engineering features were the trench incline which raised boats 75 feet to the summit level and this continued working until 1921. It also included the uh, Berwick Tunnel which was one of the first tunnels of a, any significant length to be built on the canal which had a towpath running through it and it also had 11 guillotine gated locks. The remains of two still survive to this day at Hadley Park, Telford. The eastern section went from Norbury Junction to Wappenshaw and opened in 1835. It was in effect a branch of the Birmingham and Liverpool Junction Canal. Thomas Telford's last canal has superb stonework which can be particularly admired at Forton with its aqueduct and skew bridge. And then of course there's the Wappenshaw Junction which we have uh, been talking about shortly. In uh, 1840 the canal was uh, made to be part of the Shropshire Union Canal and in doing so was modified to take conventional narrowboats. One really hopes that they're able to uh, renovate uh, this uh, canal because it's got some beautiful scenic opportunities in it as we will find out shortly. So uh, here we are then at uh, Norbury Wharf or Norbury Junction and this is where the canal we are talking about, the Shrewsbury and Newport Canal, started its journey. There are in fact, you can just see one of them come into account now, um, two uh, boats being restored here. They have been donated to uh, the Trust and will be housed in a special uh, building which we will talk about shortly. Dotted along you'll find plenty of signage to explain. And here we go, bridge number one. Obviously when this is uh, 
constructed and opened again in the future, they will have to build a new arm somehow, because at the moment this goes down to a dry dock. And beyond that, I believe the canal is uh, not possible to be passed. In my introduction uh, to, with the map, we talked about Forton, and with the help of Simon's drone, we'll zip off up into the sky, and we'll go and have a look at it, shall we? Initially, that is the road that you can see, but in the distance is the Skew Bridge that we uh, just talked about. At Forton there is also an aqueduct built at the same time for the canal. We wanted to go and explore further, but unfortunately the local council had some surveyors out uh, surveying the land around the bridge. I really hope that it's to help the trust secure some more land. And uh, now we come to the jewel in the crown, as far as I am concerned, which is Newport. Not to be confused with Newport in South Wales, or any of the many other Newports. This is Newport, part of Telford. There is a lovely green open space, and it's hard to imagine that just beyond it, there is an existing and all fully watered canal. In fact, the canal is so well watered, it would be great if somehow they could in fact produce a pleasure boat to cruise along here for afternoon teas. What a great way to make some money for the trust. And all they would have to do is to open up the lock that we shall shortly see. Now this is the wharf in uh, Newport and it's an immense area, obviously a winding hole, but with some pontoons when the canal is open you would easily get eight narrowboats staying in there. What a fabulous place to moor up.
let's just take uh, another view of the Newport Wharf and Basin from a different angle. As you can see, this bridge was built in 1891. And here is a still picture of the lock, which is still remains. And you can see the rubbing post there, where the horses have ground the um, ropes away on the ironworks. And the lock bridge still in place. And this is basically for my friend Gary Captain Phillips, who used to deliver petrol to that station. Obviously the lock um, has been filled in to a degree, but there is still water there and it wouldn't take long to actually uh, remove that uh, soil and open the lock. The lock landing is in very, very good condition. And you can see where the, the gates used to be. Uh, the, the wrought iron gate is obviously a security uh, device and not a normal lock gate because it wouldn't really hold the water back very well. Here we are looking back towards the Newport Basin and Wharf and this is the other side of the bridge showing the canal still in its beautiful surroundings and wildlife in abundance. Running alongside you can still make out the overflow that used to bring excess water down by passing the lock back into the canal. We mentioned just now that there are two working boats which are currently under renovation at Norbury Wharf. Well, here we are at Wappenshaw. The canal side buildings here, including the transshipment warehouse, uh, had been little used since they were built in the 1930s and they retain many of the original features. Once they were put up for sale, they were eventually purchased, along with the length of the canal and the Wappenshaw Basin, by Telford and Regan Council, who are working with the Trust, the uh, Shrewsbury and Newport Trust, to, to allow repairs of the buildings to be undertaken. Once complete, this will provide a museum and a heritage centre, plus of course for the canal, a cafe and offices for the canal truck. You can still make out the line of the canal and here we have a fantastic roving bridge which takes a towpath from one side to the other. At least I think it's a roving bridge. It's difficult to say because obviously uh, you cannot gain access to the site. At least not very easily unless there's somebody working there. And on this day unfortunately there was nobody working there. I've mentioned the trust on many occasions. So here 
is how you can get involved with this trust. They are always looking for volunteers and if you live anywhere in this area this would be a wonderful worthwhile cause for you to get involved with. Now here we have a farmer's field, but this is not just any farmer's field, it's a heritage site which can be found at Longdon on Turn, which is northwest of Wellington. And it is here that you will find the oldest surviving iron aqueduct in the world. It's reputed to have been built by Thomas Telford and it was a forerunner to prove the design for the Punky Silty Aqueduct. For me this was one of the most fascinating aspects of my little um, trip out and it's hard sometimes to imagine that when this canal was built this was actually built to take boats it's still got the rubbing strips as you can see there and i guess this is what the punky silty aqueduct looks like without water because it was the forerunner to the punky silty aqueduct you can even see where the stop planks were put in on either side to uh, block off it when they need to do maintenance work on it exactly as they do with its big brother the Punky Silty Aqueduct. Stop planks would be inserted in here, sealed and then the trough itself could be drained. And again you can still see how this cast iron bridge was made. It is a really fascinating item to go and look at Plus, you can actually see the great big bolts they used to build it with. And these, I guess, would have been all hand forged. Just look at the size of those. And here we can see one of the series of drainage holes that were built into the original cast iron. I'm not sure how these would have been sealed, probably with cork and tyre. That's the only way I can think they could have been sealed in those days, but if anybody knows, do please uh, put it in the comments below. Running alongside the aqueduct, it's this walkway where the horses would have walked pulling the uh, narrowboats along. It doesn't look very wide and it's also quite low down. If you imagine the boat would have been up near the top and the brickwork. <laughs> Just think how old these bricks are and they are still standing today. Amazing. How do you hold a bridge together? Looks as if they used these particular cast iron rods interlinked to maintain some degree of alignment. Here we can see the uh, actual aqueduct bolted onto the brickwork as well. I can't believe that um, 
these bolts to put on it. I guess the actual trough itself is sat on top of the brickwork. And then of course there's the struts that hold up the length of the trough. By no means meagre in appearance, they are some sturdy bits of iron. The uh, aqueduct itself was built to cross the River Mees, which feeds the Aqualate Mere, which is a national nature reserve and the largest lake in the West Midlands region, covering some 214.4 acres, which is 86.8 hectares. That was different, wasn't it? Yeah, I, do you know what? I had the most superb day out there with Simon. We had great fun um, visiting those sites. And I was completely bowled over by the aqueduct that we saw at the end. Wow, wow, wow. And that's... Um, it's really hard to understand that that is the same building technique of the Ponkisilti aqueduct. And that's still in use today. The technology that these builders used, or Thomas Telford designed, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. Well, thank you. It's thank you time. Thank you to all my lovely subscribers. Thank you very much, and if you've not already subscribed to my channel, Please do uh, hit the uh, subscribe button and also uh, click on the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I put out uh, a new vlog. If you're watching on a mobile device in the bottom right hand corner as you are looking um, at this outro you will see my uh, sign, uh, sign up um, subscribe icon. You need to click it. That'd be lovely. Thank you very much. If you're, if you'd like to join one of my other social media um, outlets, then these are all going to come up on screen now. I'll give you links, but basically it's now about tales on any of them. So that just leads me to thank you all for watching, uh, to wish you the most amazing week and to remind you not to forget uh, Full Go Narrow Boating on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. But until then, this is Ian on board Morning Star wishing you all good health in the world. May the sun shine on you. May there be lots of laughter in your life. And until we meet again next Sunday, ta -da.